Cool. So, hi. Um, hello, everyone. It's uh, really good to see you here. Uh, it's good to be back to Tel Aviv, and it's really, you know, great pleasure to be back on stage of Wix Engineering Conference. Or to be uh, um, first time on stage in <laughs> Wix Engineering Conference. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, you, you're okay. It's a friendly <laughs> crowd, right? Right? <laughs> right. So, uh, today we're going to talk about Search and Nile and how the whole is more than some of its parts. So, um, I'm Kedi uh, Minas. I'm from Data Streams team, uh, working uh, obviously on Search. And um, on my free time, uh, this summer especially, I found the old hobby of mine, of mine um, driving a bicycle, uh, most of the time together with uh, my wife. And uh, yeah, you can guess how that ended uh, this summer. Oh. <laughs> cool, and uh, I'm Vilus from Vilnius. Uh, father of two, uh, all, you know, looking for ways to hurt myself with different kind of boards. Uh, and uh, not as successful, I guess, but on the side, um, I work on Nile and currently joint venture with Surge. So um, today uh, we want to tell you about like four things mainly. Um, first, uh, what is Surge and uh, most importantly, what is not search, um, and second, what we have for search uh, at Wix. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, it's Wix search. <laughs> um, yeah, then, then I'm gonna take over and we're gonna talk how easy it's to have uh, uh, search with Nile uh, and how, you know, uh, Nile and search integration gives you even more. Cool. So, uh, let's talk search. Yeah, hey Gadas. I have search. I'm good, right? <sighs> so, um, <laughs> this, girl, this guy uh, also thought uh, he knows what he's doing. Um, but yeah, uh, doing a contains filter or a like query in MySQL, is, uh, it's not search, sorry. It's filtering by characters in some text, and um, search is um, matching words, or even better, meaning of words in the text. And um, uh, with filter, you actually just um, get results that match your filter, and that, that's it. And search usually returns you ranked results, so you, you get ranked results by relevance. And um, Another um, bummer <laughs> is uh, performance. So you cannot do contains on really large databases. Um, it will start to not work for you. And um, like uh, Enif said, uh, we need uh, apps working fast at Wix. Right, so I guess I need something better. Like what do I do? And so, uh, you need a search engine, basically. Uh, so, um, when you have a search engine, uh, you get documents from your database and uh, pull them to, to your search engine. And once the documents hit the search engine, um, documents get analyzed, uh, converted into, basically, tokens. And the tokens are stored in the inverted index. And once the user sends the search query to your search engine, uh, the query also gets analyzed and converted to tokens and conveniently matched to the tokens in the index. And once the documents are matched, um, they are getting ranked and returned to the user. Okay, this is like, you know, nice picture and arrows, but maybe you can elaborate in a bit more detail on what's going on here. Yeah, so basically, uh, like document analysis, yeah, so uh, it's analysis of text. So uh, text usually gets normalized 
uh, you need to do HTML stripping, like make your text clean, uh, convert it to tokens, basically split by something, uh, usually white spaces or some characters. Um, and then the tokens itself needs uh, normalization as well to basically uh, make them like better tokens, let's say, okay? So that includes lower casing, uh, stemming them, or uh, lemmatizing if you're feeling fancy. Um, then uh, uh, get, uh, the tokens get stored in the inverted index. And an index you can imagine like, uh, like a book index, where at the end, usually, you have a list of words to, uh, sorted alphabetically, and you can find the word of your interest, and you can see in which page you will find um, the token or the word. And um, queries, queries uh, goes through the same process usually as the documents. So normalize text, tokenize, normalize tokens, and just match, uh, match the tokens with the tokens in your index. And you get the results. Okay. Now you mentioned that, you know, my search is not that great on ranking. Can you tell me more about how real search does that? Um, okay, we can try. So um, one of uh, the like simplest uh, scoring algorithms is uh, TF-IDF scoring. So um, TF stands for term frequency. So uh, basically how uh, often word appears in the document. Um, IDF stands for inverse document frequency. Basically, uh, one divided by document frequency, uh, so uh, how many documents has the term, let's say. And for example, if we have the query, the diddle and the document, the diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, um, term frequency for word there would be two, for word diddle would be also two, inverse document frequency would be uh, for there, uh, close to zero because almost any, every document will have word there. And uh, the word uh, diddle, uh, let's say seven documents has this document, so inverse document frequency is one divided by seven. Uh, and once you apply to the formula, you get some number, the score. And once you apply the formula for multiple documents, um, you can sort basically them by the score, uh, which is fast and uh, somehow relevant. Okay, you know, like I think sorting uh, is important in a way, right? So uh, I'm sold. How do, how do I get the search now? Uh, so you, you just need to implement it in, in the feature in your app, yeah? So you need a search engine. You need to know how to use it, yeah? Uh, you need um, define, to define your index structure, uh, write indexing logic, um, write querying logic, map uh, platformized filters to search engine filters, yeah? Uh, then you need to take care of data replication between data centers, GDPR, PII, and we're not even starting to speak about data migration and stuff like that. Dude, this is like way too many boxes and arrows. It's gonna take me months. I, you know, I think I'll stick to what I have. Like, it's good enough. Willow, come on. <laughs> we have big search at Vix. <laughs> so, big uh, search, it's easy to use search over gRPC API, uh, which has already platformized filter support. Uh, data in ingestion is over Greyhound, so everyone knows how to do that. Um, PII data is searchable, which is nice. It's also encrypted and searchable. Um, and uh, GDPR handling and uh, data replication is also taken care of. Okay, uh, a lot of smart words and you know, I like no need to write, no need to look. But uh, you know, uh, in practice, what was the integration so story? How does it save me time? So um, yeah, integrating with uh, Vic Search you only need to do like few things. Define schema, um, then the, like, the schema, the index itself has to be created. Um, you have to take care of your um, 
change capture and uh, streaming data to, ch to search. And also, you have to uh, write the code which will query uh, the, the search over gRPC. Um, once you have uh, those parts, usually people go through the like refinement stage where we find uh, what's not working, what we need to change uh, to, uh, for the solution to work well. Um, and then what you need to do, just migrate uh, all your data to search and release uh, to everyone. So, um, okay, uh, please show me more. <laughs> yeah, so that's more. Um, so the finding schema, it's easy. We have a spreadsheet template. You just basically fill uh, the spreadsheet with, with your uh, desired fields. You mark what kind of functionality you want uh, per field. Um, and then uh, we take care of uh, converting it to something uh, uh, programs can understand. Yeah, and uh, we do a little push for you to uh, we create an index for you, make everything ready for you. And uh, once we finish with that, you just need to uh, somehow stream your data changes uh, to, to search. So what people usually do, they have some service which is connected to database and um, in uh, current uh, environment people have domain events which are streamed to Kafka, yeah? So uh, they need something in between uh, Kafka and Wix search. Uh, so people usually just create another service which listens to their own domain events, convert them to Wix search documents, and send them to, to search. Um, and uh, to make it easier for, for them, there is uh, like easy to use, create, update, uh, delete uh, uh, message. Uh, you just uh, form it and, uh, and that's it. Um, then the uh, next step is handling search request. Uh, so read flow, you just basically convert your API call to Wix search call, um, make the call itself, get back the document IDs or documents themselves, and fetch, fetch them from database, uh, make all the mappings and return the result for your user. Um, usually code some, looks something like this, of course, like two search filter may, might be like much more complicated. Um, mapping to your domain also uh, sometimes uh, includes uh, complex code, but uh, uh, it basically boils down to it. Um, of course, uh, when you have all the parts, uh, not everything works uh, like right from the beginning, so we need to go and uh, like update something, change, so everything works as you want it to work let's see and once that's done it's time to release you need all data in the in the, in the search yeah so uh, what should we do we already have something some some architecture which looks similar similar to this so uh, we need yet another uh, server which will be an indexer it will be connected uh, to the database. Like, it's not my business. People know their databases uh, better than I do. So um, they do that. I, I, I don't know. They just uh, send search documents to me and the, the migration is taken care of. Yeah, so to wrap up, um, Wix search is uh, kind of uh, like uh, uh, I've platform with a lot of functionalities. We have to um, provide a lot uh, different to different use cases, um, but uh, you get uh, like features basically for free, like a lot. Uh, just you need to write code. Okay, so, you know, <sighs> Spreadsheet, I'm not a huge fan, but can do it. Couple of services, we're like good at Linux with, you know, spawning those and some mapping code. You know, I think I can do it. So I'm off to implementing. Okay, good luck.
<laughs> Many months later. Uh, yeah, hey Gaddas. You know, I integrated with Search. It was like really pleasant experience. I get a lot, like a bit forth and back, but pretty flawless. But you know, while doing that, I got this feeling that in a Nile era, like we can we could do better. What do you think? Um, what is Nile? Oh, <laughs> good you asked. Uh, Nile streamlines platformized microservice development. Okay, okay, so stop a bit. Streamlines, it's uh, just a bunch of gibberish to me. <laughs> like, can you elaborate a bit what, what, what this streamlines, platformized, microservices, buzzwords mean? Okay, yeah, this is a bit dense, right? So, uh, when I think about Nile, I think about like four main pillars, right? One thing is uh, around open platform services, APIs. And uh, it's, you know, about paper road. So we try uh, to, to uh, provide as close to zero code as possible experience for developers when they are, you know, on a happy and uh, paved road path. Then if you need to take like deviation or, you know, a bit of detour, but it's like not totally different path, uh, we provide well integrated libraries and tools so that you know you can really expand and, and still be really productive. Then uh, there are questions not of you know uh, what but how, right? So in this case, uh, we try to provide guidelines, be it uh, migration, testing, relational. Uh, and one that I really like, it's che checks and feedbacks. It's so that you know when I work on my service, when I expand my domain, when I do change a system talks to you, right? It tells you like, hey, Maybe it's not a good idea what you're doing, think about it, or like in addition, you need to go and do that, right? So this is how I sort of think about Nile. Um, okay, but how does uh, it help with search? Uh, good you ask. So we need to think about what is the paved road for Nile and search, right? Okay. Um, so basically the focus is like, Search supports a variety of use cases. In Nile land, it's API-based search, and more specifically, search for entity-based APIs. Basically allowing developers to expose a search capability from API with least effort possible, right? Okay. Uh, and another building block is SDL as a storage engine. Okay, so it gives convention, domain event, CDC, and SDL is the uh, most popular storage solution for Nile services. Right, so this is basically the the path and and sort of limitations we take into account to give like a more optimized experience. Okay, so can we look further how how it might uh, ev evolve? Let's say definitely. So you know, uh, I want to walk us through like what does it take to integrate to search and see how Nile changes that for be better or worse. Right, so spreadsheet defines schema, right, uh, in search. And again, search needs to cover a variety of use cases, APIs, non-APIs, like everything, right? In Nile, given we have API, it turns out it already contains quite some useful metadata for search, right? We have types, we have formats, for example, ID is good. Uh, we can see that tags is a string collection in search terms. Uh, we see that, let's say, lorem uppercase is a PII field. So it's, you know, some, some data to start from. And when we go to search or query API, there is additional metadata on actual capabilities that it provides. So uh, in this example, uh, we see that, okay, this search products API allows you to filter by tags and search within lorem uppercase field. And, you know, this metadata has, you know, can be and is used for many systems and integrations. Uh, already used for DB driver, auto DB driver generation, can be exported, you know, rendered to docs. Uh, we do want to provide a runtime filter validation, right? So, like, if I say that my clients can filter by tags, only filters by tags, you know, pass to my domain. And, nice. you know, when... When we look close to it, we see that actually there is enough information to 
generate a search schema. Wow. Nice, right? <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, <laughs> so now, again, continuing, uh, you know, you had to take the spreadsheet and apply it, you know, create indexes and do stuff, right? But now there is no spreadsheet. So uh, to get a search, developer basically, this is like a service descriptor in Nileland. Uh, developer just says like, hey, I want to integrate with search, provide some metadata, push your codes to master, and machines take over. Like picture details, not really important, but the important things is from the time you push your codes and you know, uh, intend to integrate to, with search to master, uh, and by the time you will manage to GA, everything is ready. The POC schema is ready, uh, indexes are ready, and your uh, search requests will succeed. Okay, so again, sorry, Gad, that's a bit less work and <laughs> talk sorry? for you. Why sorry? <laughs> <laughs> cool. So uh, next thing that, you know, for search integration developers needed to do is to create search feeder artifact, right? Again, nothing too terrible, some mapping code. But now, given there is no separation between search schema and API schema, it turns out this is not necessary. Because Amazing. I know. <laughs> because actually, with Wix search listens on your domain events. It has the mapping from its schema to API, does the mapping and indexes documents for you. Wow, that's impressive. You know, again, it's not to <laughs> uh, be more excited, please. Uh, it's <laughs> Yo, oh, that's too much, too much. So, you know, it's not too terrible code, but if we, you know, have talk about tens, hundreds of integrations, this is like something that you, you don't need to write, don't need to test. This is, I think, pretty neat. Um, handling search requests, again, with uh, raw Wix search integration, uh, developer at least needs to sort of map like API fields to search schema fields, right? At minimum, if like they match pretty well. Uh, while again, it's I know it's getting a bit boring, right? What do you need to do in Ireland? Remove stuff. Yeah, you don't need to do that because now search talks into la in a language of your domain. So basically. You know, you get the cursor search, the, the platformized version for your API, and you can shove it to, to search. Uh, and like today, this is the code you need to write. Like details are not, not important. Uh, but in, let's say, I expect in a month or two, this is the code that you will need to write, which basically the search is under SDL, right? You take the request, it, it does execute search, gets IDs, pulls entities, you just map and return, right? So again, as close to zero code as possible. Indexing existing data. Again, search, you know, doesn't know about how you store the data, like what's going on there. Given in Nile, we chose, you know, uh, SDL as part of paved road. Turns out we have already tools and, means, me, tools and means to deal with it. Okay, so the, the part of the package is CDC. You know, we know, <laughs> we know how it operates, how, you know, we have all the building blocks for CDC integration. And uh, sort of sadly, you still need to deploy something for re-indexing, but really it's not uh, the, the code, the mapping code that you need to test. It's more of configuration. And, you know, about the destiny of this piece of work, I'll talk later uh, in my talk. Cool. Again, no code, configuration, less work. Um, and when we talk about, you know, going to production, uh, I don't know, sadly or happily, uh, <laughs> people will need to, developers will need to talk to you because, well, there is still the question, you know, of capacity planning, of sizing, how much data there is, what throughput you expect. So uh, we're not there yet to sort and infer this data from like the system. You know, someday maybe. At least here I'm needed. <laughs> cool. So uh, TLDR, 
Wix search needs to support a wide variety of cases, right? So code needs to be written. While in uh, Nile, we focus on paved road. So we, you know, little to no code really needs to be written. Um, I like it a lot, like less, it's, uh, it's always uh, good. But uh, in our name of the presentation, there is more. So where is it? Wait, you asked. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, less is already pretty good in my book. I, I, I like writing less when I can. Uh, but definitely, there is more. And we can go over some, like, examples, you know, uh, of things that we get from this, you know, elimination of some manual work and tighter integration. So uh, let's look at first... Uh, of them is reliable revision handling, right? So uh, let's say, you know, you have entity create, update, delete events, and natural life cycle is it's created, then updated, 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 and potentially eventually it's deleted, right? This is like how it works. Uh, does it? Because in real life, in, in distributed system, right, you can actually get to like created, updated, deleted, updated flows. Have you seen any of those? Yeah, a couple of times. <laughs> so it's not only theory, right? It happens. And like, look, we have ways to deal with it. You have, you can, you know, use, I don't know, timestamps. You can use uh, revisions for optimistic locking. But again, like you, you can potentially can have updates where you don't want to increment revision. And you know, this, like you can solve it to a point, but it's not a simple problem in many cases. While given, uh, again, paved road is with SDL. So for, and SDL maintains uh, always incrementing counter, no matter your revision that you use, right? And for this effort, actually, SDL exposed us the counter and it's built in into the offering. And you don't need to think about revision handling anymore. Nice side effect. I know. Uh, Another thing is uh, domain, updated domain event handling, right? So let's say, you know, uh, search gets two domain events, updates, where the only field that it cares about is foo, like searchable field, but uh, what changed is bar. What happens in current state? Well, everything. <laughs> yes, I mean, Search doesn't know, right? It doesn't have a knowledge, like, should I do anything about it? Did anything change? So it's like brute force and just, you know, update indexes, spend CPU, you know, network and uh, everything, which is a waste, especially if we go into like a uh, bigger scale. Now uh, in Nile, like as we speak, we're rolling out the diff, which means that together with your update event, the diff is sent, where you can determine like what exactly changed, right? And this is open to everybody to use in different contexts, but given the mapping is uh, on search, right? From your domain to schema, guess what happens? Um, I don't get events. No, you do get events. Sadly, that would be even better, right? Not to get extraneous events, but no, you do. But actually, you know, uh, search, can basically index first and then look at the change set and discard second one. Saving CPU, saving cost, and doing less pointless work. Well, not getting them at all would be better, but I love it already. It's, it's uh, you know, progress. <laughs> okay, uh, next one in line is smart routing. So given, again, search and uh, SDL is an API, right, is in a paved road, uh, let's look at several examples of like filter expressions that reach your API. So the first one is pretty simple, filter by IDs. And the question is, which system, like your database or search engine, uh, is more efficient or should handle it? What do you think? I think search. Well, you always think search. You're from search. Anyone else? <laughs> Wrong. Uh, but, you know, good attempt. No, actually, you know, databases are efficient for filtering by IDs. Right? I mean, if your database doesn't have index on ID, like, there is, like, way more wrong there. Um, now, let's look at second example, which is a full text search, right? 
So which system, database or search engine? Of course search. Oh. Hopefully we prove that database shouldn't do search. Uh, really, yeah, this, is, this is definitely goes to search. And then we have something like more interesting, which is like filter, but the more complex, right? Multiple conditions. Uh, so database or search engine, what do you think? It depends, really, right? I mean, technically, if you have with search integrating, you can write the code, you know your indexes, you know, analyze this, and say like, oh, I have indexes. I, like, database can do that. Um, but it's a tricky code. I'm not sure, you know, I would want to deal with it. I, I would be too lazy. But now, given search uh, and SDL, like, are integrated, it's, you know, there is good ROI to do this capability, really. And like, you know, SDL knows the indexes, API, and this is capability that we can have, and we can have uh, faster responses, you know, uh, better resource utilization, right? So, two, first two are pretty simple to implement. This one is uh, more interesting, but it's doable because of like expanded semantics that we have. And uh, last but not least is unsafe, unsafe schema changes. So let's say you have, you know, your search API and you say, hey, I want to give my clients a uh, possibility to filter by count, which is like I want to expand capabilities and I want to be generally available, which in API, you know, evolution uh, land, it's like safe change, right? I don't delete anything. This is like good. This is what we should do. Uh, but really it depends, because now if the count uh, comes from search, is it needs to be indexed, right? Uh, like you might miss that, but given we are integrating, integrated search can detect this change and tell you like, hey, like you did this. Uh, it's not necessarily a great idea. Maybe you should start with internal availability, take care of, you know, re-indexing or backfilling of your index, and then go GA. And, you know, maybe this is a new field, like this is good, you set approve, I know what I'm doing. But again, like this sort of, you know, capability that system can tell you when you, you know, maybe you're doing something not great with expanded semantics, uh, I like those, as I said, like safety nets that, you know, we can have and we can provide. Amazing. Anything else? Uh, yeah, so, again, where are we at? What's this thing? Is it like dreams happening? Uh, basically, things are working already. Uh, yeah, so we have E2E for search filter working, auto domain event indexing, basically no need for feeder artifact working. Uh, and currently, we have four initial adopters, like having testing going to production. Uh, in near term, uh, we want to complete aggregations that adopters asked us for. Uh, complete sort of buildup of re-indexing artifact, add data extension support. Uh, and also, uh, like, I, I really want to work on safe schema evolution. This excites me. Uh, and also getting out of closed beta, right? So anybody without first talking to us could just come and, like, integrate. And we have also dreams. They are not too extreme, but, like, single click re-indexing job. I think that would be neat, right? When you don't need to deploy, set up CDC, you just, like, I need to re-index stuff. Go. Uh, and full self-service, so people wouldn't need to talk to you at all. Yeah, make me completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, you know, you could focus on, on work. Uh, so, takeaways. So, um, search uh, is uh, usually more than uh, people think that search is. Um, and Wix search... Uh, provides you a lot out of the box, out of the box, but you still need to think what you want to achieve and uh, write code for it. And Nile Search, given the paid road, actually provides you with more while doing less. And I also want to thank very, very much our first adopters. They kept us busy, like really busy, for the last couple of weeks. 
uh, you know, finding some issues, asking for features, which we really try to deliver. So for patients and, you know, being there, there with us, uh, really thank you wherever you are. And yeah, that's it. Thanks uh, for coming.